Welcome to this first lecture about the false discovery rate. In this first video, we'll try to understand the concept of the false discovery rate. Whereas in later videos, we'll have a look at two different methods that can control the false discovery rate to a certain level. To understand this video, I assume that you're familiar with type 1 and 2 errors, and that you understand the concept of the family-wise error rate. If these concepts are new to you, watch these two videos first. The easiest way to understand the false discovery rate is to start with a simple example. In this example, we have four healthy individuals that are used as controls, and four individuals with a certain disease. To identify the cause behind the disease, one can for example identify a gene in human genome that might differ between healthy individuals and people with the disease. Our genes produce mRNA molecules that are used as templates to build proteins. This is called gene expression. If we happen to identify a gene that is significantly higher or lower expressed in the disease group compared to the healthy control group, we might have discovered a gene that contributes to the disease. However, the problem is that we have about 20,000 coding genes, which means they've had to measure the expression levels of all 20,000 genes, and then make a huge number of comparisons in order to identify differentially expressed genes. Suppose that we have analyzed the expression of 10,000 genes. For example, we see that gene number 1 has a higher expression in the four individuals with the disease, compared to the healthy controls. Now, suppose that 5,000 out of the 10,000 genes we analyze have different expression levels, which means that there is a true difference in the gene expression between the disease group and the healthy controls in these 5,000 genes. In comparison, for the other 5,000 genes, there is no difference at all in the gene expression between the healthy controls and the ones with the disease. In a real situation, we do not know which genes that are truly different between the two groups. One way to identify genes that have a different gene expression is to run 10,000 t-tests. In this example, we know that 5,000 genes are truly different between the healthy controls and the disease group which means that out of the 10,000 null hypotheses that are tested, we know that 5,000 of these are false, whereas the other 5,000 null hypotheses that are tested are known to be true. Let's say that we use a significance level of 0 0.05 for each t-test without correcting for multiple testing. Then we expect that 5% of these t-tests where the null hypothesis is true would result in a p-value that is less than 0 0.05 due to chance. This means that we expect to commit 250 type 1 errors. In other words, out of the 10,000 genes, we expect that 250 genes will be false positives, because we will conclude that there is a significant difference in the gene expression of these 250 genes, although there actually is no true difference. Since we have a small sample size, we expect to commit many type 2 errors, which means that we will fail to reject a lot of the 5,000 false null hypotheses. For example, when we compare the gene expression of gene number 2, which is truly different, we might get a p-value of 0 0.07, which is greater than 0 0.05. We would therefore not reject this null hypothesis even though it is false. Let's say that we would compute 10,000 t-tests where 5,000 null hypotheses are true and 5,000 are false. This figure shows a histogram of the distribution of 5,000 p-values from the 5,000 tests where the null hypothesis is true. Note that these 5,000 p-values have a uniform distribution between 0 and 1. For example, we see that about 250 p-values are less than 0 0.05. This is expected since about 5% of the p-values from the 5,000 tests where the null hypotheses are true should by chance be less than 0 0.05. In this example, 270 p-values happen to be less than 0 0.05. This means that out of the 10,000 tests, we have identified 270 false positive genes. We have therefore made 270 type 1 errors because we rejected 272 null hypotheses. 
the other 4,730 genes are true negatives because the p-values from these tests are bigger than 0 0.05, which means that we do not reject these two null hypotheses. When we study the distribution of the p-values from where the null hypotheses are false, we see that most p-values are below 0 0.05, which is expected since these genes are truly different. In this example, there are 3,288 true positive results. This means that out of the 5,000 genes that are actually truly different, we identify 3,288 genes to be significantly expressed. Whereas 1,712 genes are false negatives because they are non-significant. This means that the p-values from the t-tests for comparing these genes are greater than 0 0.05, although there is a true difference between the healthy group and the disease group. We have therefore made 1,712 type 2 errors out of the 10,000 tests because we did not reject these false null hypotheses. Okay, so we can now calculate the false discovery rate, which is the number of false positives divided by the total number of positives. In this case, the false discovery rate is about 7.6%. This means that out of the 3,558 tests that we have declared to be significant, 7.6% are false positives. Note the difference between the false positive rate and the false discovery rate. The false positive rate is the proportion of false positives out of all tests where the null hypothesis is true. Whereas the false discovery rate is the proportion of false positives out of all rejected hypotheses. The false discovery rate was proposed by Benjamini and Hochberg in 1995 as an alternative to the family-wise error rate to adjust for multiple comparisons. The false discovery rate is the expected proportion of false positives among the total number of rejected hypotheses or discoveries. So, what would happen if we control the family-wise error rate to 5% by using, for example, a bond for our own correction. Our new significance level would then be 0 0.05 divided by 10,000, which is equal to 0 0.000005. Based on our previous example, we'll make no type 1 errors, since no p-value from the true null hypothesis was lower than our adjusted significance level. The false discovery rate is therefore 0%, since no false positives were detected. This is great because we do not want to commit type 1 errors. However, we reject only 3 out of the 5,000 false null hypotheses. We therefore commit 4,997 type 2 errors. Bone for owner correction is therefore not appropriate to use when we make many comparisons since it overcorrects for type 1 errors, which results in an inflation of type 2 errors. When we reduce the significance level from 0 0.05 to 0 0.000005 by using the bone for own method, we dramatically reduce the risk for committing a type 1 error and at the same time dramatically increase the risk for a type 2 error. Let's try to control the false discovery rate to 5% instead of controlling the family wise error rate. We'll here arbitrarily set the significance level to 0 0.02. By setting the significance level to 0 0.02, we obtain 123 false positive results and 2,339 true positive results, which result in a false discovery rate of about 5%. In comparison to the bone for owner correction, where we only discovered three significant results, we now discover 2,462 significant results when we use a false discovery rate of 5% instead of a family-wise error rate of 5%. However, we must be aware of the fact that about 5% of these discoveries are actually false discoveries when we interpret the results. This means that out of the 2,462 significant genes in our list, 5% of these are expected to be false positives. In other words, our list of genes 
is expected to include 123 false positive genes that happen to result in p-values that are less than 0.02 due to chance. So, is there a way to find an appropriate significance level so that the false discovery rate is controlled at 5%? In the next videos, we look at two different methods that can be used to control the force discovery rate. Thanks for watching.